I have in my hands a box of MacGuffins, and you're probably wondering what is inside. So, uh, Frankie, thanks for letting me out of my box for a minute, man. Yeah, no problem, pal. So, uh, how's the, uh, career going? Which career? Uh, stand-up comedy. How's it going? Can't go on stage because, uh, it's all too late. I have to get back to my storage unit, you know, to get the, uh, blankets to sleep on. Oh, because you're homeless. Yes. Haha. <laughs> Anywho, um, I got an idea. Oh, boy, here we go. I said I have an idea, Frank. And I said, here we go. Okay. So, uh, why don't you do your stand-up act for me? No. Come on, man, please. Like right, like right here? Like, kind of, kind of looks like a stage, right? <laughs> it's a train station where I came in, right there. Ironic. Anywho, why don't you uh, do your stand-up back, bro? For you? Yeah, man, come on, man. I love you, and you're my favorite human. Well, one of my favorite humans. There's others you prefer over me. I'm just saying, man. You're a little weird. <laughs> Touche, I suppose. Anywho, um, if you don't mind, it's getting a little windy, and the feather is... Uh, I stuck it down there for you. Uh, anyway, come on, man, do it. Will you heckle me? You know I'm gonna heckle you. Okay. I feel like it should be announced or something? Coming to the stage now, Frank Barris! Yay! Oh, sir, can you Frank! See? Frank! Uh, wait till they know you like as a presidential candidate before just going into the song. Just uh, be humble. Humbler than a stand-up comic with his imaginary friend on a street corner next to a train station doing my act? Yeah, yeah, like that. All right. You want to just introduce me again, I suppose? Yeah, man, let's do this. This feels weird, man. There's no crowd. I'm your crowd, man. Just pretend there's people out there like, you know, like most stand-up comics do in the beginning. Sure, man. You want to introduce me? Here he is, the one and only Frank Barris! Oh yeah! How you doing there, folks? I'm, I need like a... Microphone. This'll do it. Boring! Really? Introduce me again. For your viewing pleasure here in Austin, Texas, Frank Barris! Oh yeah! Hello there, folks. I'm Frank Barish, and I have come from Blue Springs, Missouri to put Austin, Texas on the map. <laughs> and if you recognize that as a Bukowski reference, Gold Star for you. Gold Star isn't necessarily good, because, you know, I think in this country that means uh, you've fallen for the war machine's propaganda enough to convince your children to enlist in the military, and then one of them is killed by the war machine, and then... Yeah, Gold Star's bad, so let's, uh, anywho, this is a box of MacGuffins, and, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I haven't been on stage in a while, because I bombed pretty badly last time. Um, how bad did you bomb? I bombed so bad, I was getting condolence letters from around the world. Places as far away as Nagasaki, Japan. You think that's bad? Dresden, Germany. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mmm, and a hush falls over the room as critical race theory might be in the building with us. Ha <laughs> ha, it's not. It's just actual history. How many people know that the first Americans bombed from the air were the black residents of Tulsa, Oklahoma a hundred years ago? And the people who bombed them the white folks drop bombs on Greenwood. Why? Because it was a successful, thriving business community. And if you don't think that should be taught in history class, well, then you're the problem. And this was supposed to be a comedy act. What's my next? I'm hoping for more, like, 
you know, play with the audience on that one. We'll see. I thought it was just a rant. But anyway, what's the next one? So, I, uh, fucking hot. Jesus, fuck. Do we have any better locations? I don't know, man. Have you booked any better locations? Touche. Oh, okay, back to the act. So, I belong to the one true religion. That's right, folks. I'm agnostic. Yeah. I'm engaged to be married. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, clap, clap, clap. Fortunately, the wedding's on hold at the moment because uh, she died. Um, but it's okay. I mean, it's just another, you know, you know how these things are. So now I have to die. And then we both have to be reborn again and then meet and then obviously fall in love. Um, and then have a car, a truck backing up in the middle of your act. Are we done? I just got heckled by a truck, folks. Such is the life of a stand-up comic. Is that what this is? Is that what this is, really? So I don't even want to hear about your wedding planning problems until you've actually you've had to coordinate nuptials across incarnations. I don't even want to hear about your story, pal. No, trust me. Ha <laughs> ha! So I had to write a eulogy for both of my parents recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're not dead. <laughs> Just, I had to start writing, I guess, is my thing. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was time to get some, you know, thoughts down, have a working draft ready, because you know that, that moment between finding out about the death and the funeral? You want to enjoy that. You want uh, to kind of bask in that moment, and I don't want to be stuck writing and working on drafts. I want to have a good, solid working draft going into that, just so I can kind of bask in it, enjoy it, I guess. Um, I've always been jealous of orphans. Yeah, lucky bastards. <laughs> yeah, no, I could do, so this is a part of my act that could expand or contract, but we're gonna go, since the sun is now coming out strong, we're gonna get on to the next one. Uh, but uh, things are looking up for me, yes. I had two dates last night and a prune and a fig. <laughs> and with that, we're gonna get to the Box of MacGuffins. Doo -doo -doo, whoop -a -doo. Man, Box of MacGuffin time, let's do this. Since I drink this water because I'm performing in a field. I have in my hands a Box of MacGuffins and you are probably wondering what is inside. I of course cannot show you as the only people allowed to look inside of the Box of MacGuffins are myself, women I've made love to recently, and people who've donated 10 grand to the Mindswell Project. So unless you've given me $10,000 or made love to me recently, you don't get to see inside. It's just for me. I hold in my hand a list of all the people that I believe have been murdered by the CIA and or FBI. And then you expect a little giggling. Yeah, 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 I'm a, I'm a prop comic now. Carrot top, watch out. Anywho, we'll start down the list and uh, yay or nay from the audience, if you would. JFK, obviously. Expect the audience to all be on my RFK. His brother Bobby. I keep this, I keep this right here with me. Not a single witness in the ambassador ballroom kitchen saw Sirhan Sirhan's gun get within five feet of Bobby, who was killed by a gun fired an inch behind his ear. One more time, not a single witness saw a gun get within five feet of Bobby Kennedy, Sirhan's gun, way over there shooting wildly. Bobby was killed by a bullet that was fired from this far behind his head, where a policeman was standing guarding him who owned the same gun, or the same type of gun that made the same stippling marks as Sirhan's gun. Sirhan, who showed massive signs of hypnosis, you should watch the tapes, it's freaky. JFK Jr., I mean, obviously, am I? Teddy, right when we were about to get the public option, Teddy gets a brain tumor, oopsie doopsie. No public option for us. You know, Teddy Kennedy would not have stood for Obamacare as the abomination it is now. Martin Luther King, obviously. We don't even have to go into that one. Malcolm X, that, we just found out the people convicted 
of shooting Malcolm X didn't do it. Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton was murdered by actual uniformed police officers in his bed. And then they paraded everybody in town past that bed to see all the bullet holes. Why? Because the head of the FBI, a cross-dressing psychopath named J. Edgar Hoover, was afraid of a black messiah. So Fred Hampton had to die. And we'll get back to the black messiah complex that the FBI is so afraid of Fred Hampton. Jimi Hendrix. Let's see. Woodstock. Why is Bob Dylan not at Woodstock? Because Bob Dylan wants to live. Bob Dylan knows whoever headlines Woodstock, dead in a year. Jimi Hendrix headlined Woodstock, dead in a year. Bob Marley. Bob Marley died of toe cancer. Now, this part I only have heard rumors of. George W. Bush, back when his dad was head of the CIA, Bushy was on the wet team. And he was actually playing soccer with Bob Marley the day Bob Marley got stabbed in the toe by someone's cleat. And that developed into cancer. Because, you know, cleat stabbings in soccer matches always lead to cancer. Can't do that on stage. That's the best part of this. Bill Hicks. I'm not going to. Can I have some clouds? Bill Hicks is a long while. Well, skip that. Gary Webb exposed that the CIA completely controlled the crack epidemic that took over the cities and let a million black men in jail. So then the white people can come out and go, why are they abandoning their families? Well, maybe because you locked them up for crack, which you put into their cities. Yeah, while well, marijuana, which is all anyone ever wanted back in the day. Illegal, can't grow it. Go to jail for that too. Tupac, obviously, Biggie, collateral damage. Princess Diana. What? You said, come on, bro. No, Princess Diana. Why? Look at the official cause of her death. A doctor happened to be on the scene and took charge of the ambulance. That ambulance then averaged 25 miles an hour to the third closest hospital where Diana was found dead upon arrival. Oops. Realized, could not have had the Iraq war with Diana. She'd have gone to Baghdad and go, go ahead, bomb it. You know she would have. Paul Wellstone, obviously. Bernie's lucky they can just steal the elections now. Because Bernie'd be dead in a minute if he, you know, if the elections were fair then. Do that. Kurt Cobain. Oh, fuck with this. Can I have a cloud for Kurt Cobain, please? No? Okay, I'm sweating on Kurt. Okay. So the official cause, I didn't believe, I thought Courtney Love didn't kill Kurt Cobain. That's just silly. Then I found out Kurt Courtney Love used to show up at parties or at concerts with a thousand hits of acid. Who shows up at concerts with a thousand hits of acid? CIA agents, always. Google merry pranksters and see what they did. Driving across the country in a bus full of narcs. Fucking up city. Let's get everyone high. See who the geniuses are. See who the leaders are. And then oopsie doopsie. Off they go. Where Jimi Hendrix went. And Bob Marley. And everyone else on this list. Which is now to Kurt Cobain. Which you're like, come on, bro. The official cause of death of Kurt Cobain. Obviously, the... the Shotgun blasting off his head. And, wait, wait, wait. And he had three times a lethal dose of heroin in his body. His heroin works, the whole the spoon, and put away neatly. So he triple dosed, triple overdosed, put everything away, then shot himself. That's the official cause of death of Kurt Cobain. Google the suicide note. It's in two different handwritings, bro. Janis Joplin. She was gonna be huge in the peace movement. I got a whole story for that, but that's when the sun isn't shining in my head. Lenny Bruce, same story. I met a guy named Merlin, who's part of the Merry Pranksters, who was probably on the CIA wet team. Google my Merlin videos and find those. Pretty sure he just deathbed confessed to being part of a CIA hit team that killed Janis Joplin, Lenny Bruce, and Neil Cassidy.
He just happened to be right with them at the time of their death. Oops, all three of them. Which leads me to Prince. Prince, come on, Prince. It's so fucking hot out here. Prince was never political though. Yeah, look at Prince's posthumous album. His first political album. He was about to be a leader of the BLM movement and he overdosed in an elevator? So Prince, at this point in his life, is so bad with timing out his drugs that he overdosed in an elevator. Yeah, no, that's likely. So I turn this over. I'm going for the ending, thank God. Since it's all only sun. There's going to be clouds for this. All right. Okay, one more on my list. Jesus Herbert Walker Christ. Now, we don't know his middle name been lost to history. It could be Herbert Walker. You don't know. Now, he a little different with Jesus because Jesus faked his death like Jeffrey Epstein. You know, Jeffrey Epstein's boss was G-Max. Let's call her G-Max since nobody can pronounce Jizzle Bang Bang, whatever the fuck her name name. G-Max, whose father was an Israeli super spy. G-Max was Epstein's boss in the operation and the operation was get all the powerful men fucking 14 year olds on tape so Mossad now has all of that and Mossad is of course just an Israeli version of these guys the ones that did it all the fucking evil of the world hashtag scatter the CIA and I'm out Ha oh, ha, great job, man. Let's get out of the sun, bro. Right? Right, bro? Let's get out of the sun. I gotta put, I gotta put my list back in the box of MacGuffins, which obviously I'm not gonna show you people inside the box of MacGuffins. All right, oops, oh. Fit it in there, all right. Box of MacGuffins secure. Frank Barris over and out. It's still going, I hope it's still going. Right, Jesus, fuck fucking hot. Don't drop him. Don't drop him. Let's get me out of the sun before I die. Oh my god. God, it's so nice. Huh. It's cooler over here, man. Wow. It's hot over there in the sun. You don't even have a sweat glands. I know, right? Anyway, good job with the stand up act, bro. Thank you, Pally Boy. Thank you, Frank Barish. Coming now to the stage at the, uh, at the Austin train station, or kind of across from the Austin, just in a ditch somewhere, but with cool art. Anywho, uh, 